have run. Yep. All right. You ready? I'm ready if you are. Yeah, let's get this show. Okay. Right. Well, we've got a few of you come back this week, which is good. Um, I guess today we're going to kind of go, well, we're going to talk a little bit about conduct. We'll hit the uniform again, and then we're going to go over signals, what kind of hand signals you need when you're out there. So um, we're going to start. We're just going to re-hit this again real quick, uh, umpire uniform regulations. Um, you want to scroll down a little bit? I'll hit your. Okay. So basically, this is kind of what we went over in orientation. Um, powder blue shirt at minimum. Um, when you guys start out, most of your umpires, we, we want you to have this powder blue because you'll match everybody. Uh, as you do older kids, if you want to get black umpire shirts, reds, whites, they got, I don't know, the whole rainbow of color out there. As long as when you go on the field, you match your partner, we don't care what color you wear. Um, a hat, so whenever you come on the field, it has to be an umpire hat, not a... Cardinals hat or a high school ball cap, gray pants, black shoes, uh, black belt. Can't see it, and it's kind of fuzzy there. Um, your indicator, uh, if you're behind the plate, highly recommend that you guys wear cups back there. Balls do get away from that, and they do bounce. So, um, chest protector. And these are all if you're doing behind the plate. Now, if you're doing uh, coach pitch or uh, machine pitch, you'll still want a ball bag and a brush, um, but you won't need these other three in there. Okay. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, we recommend that you get plate shoes. Not so much for the younger kids, right? But if you start doing, you know, 12, 13, 14, you. Uh, those foul tips that go straight down, they can break a toe. So if you start doing the older kids, you want to seriously think about plate shoes, which are steel-toed. Um, Just gets you some comfortable shoes <clears throat> Yeah. for out on the field. Yeah, you don't have to buy umpire shoes to start with, just as long as they're dark black. Probably like yours with the edge of white, we'll allow those, won't we, Run Something like that. Yeah. But... A lot of your umpire shoes anymore have yeah, white on have them. have white on them, so. so. But no orange or yellow or green. Uh, mentioned this just a second ago. We don't, like I said, we don't care what color shirts, um, as long as you match your partner when you go on the field. Now, we understand there are some times that you get called in for a last-minute game. <clears throat> Maybe all you have is a... You know, navy blue or light blue and your partner that got called in, maybe all they brought with them was a black. There's not much we can do about that. Uh, but we always want you guys to try to match. Uh, this one, we mended this one a little bit, didn't we, Ron? Yeah, disregard number two. Yeah. Except for visible jewelry. Right. No jewelry. No jewelry. We don't allow the don't, players to wear it. We don't mind you having your cell phones. Just don't pull them out while you're on the field. The only reason why you should pull it out would be if you got an emergency or you need to get a hold of one of us <laughs> so we can get over to the field. So in between innings, don't be standing there checking your text messages or yeah. something else, okay? Just make sure it's on vibrate. So number three... If you show up to field and you're constantly out of uniform, and, and that's when we'll start looking at pulling you out of, off your games until you can start getting to the field properly. I mean, you know, I certainly understand if you show up to the field and you know you you forgot your plate or your your shoes or something like that. As long as it's not a every week thing or every game thing. Um, and umpire or goodofficial.com. For equipment, uh, or Johnny Max, or Johnny Max is still in business. They'll be there till the store will be open to what May first. <clears throat> so you can still get in there, and they're probably gonna have some good deals going on because they're getting ready to close up their store. So probably sooner rather than later, if you need uh, umpire stuff from them. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Mm -mm. 
une action. Une des actions. Umpire code of conduct. Okay. Live this, remember this, and you'll be okay. Yeah. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. You break any of these, you're going to end up in all kinds of issues on the field. At no time shall an umpire at any time lay a hand upon, push, shove, strike, or threaten a coach, player, or spectator. Okay? Don't touch them on the shoulder. Anything. Just avoid, best thing you can do is just avoid any and all physical contact with anybody. Okay? At any time be guilty of any verbal abuse, either directly or indirectly, toward any coach, player, or spectator. Okay, keep your head on your shoulders, keep your composure, keep calm. Yeah. Things get out of control. <clears throat> get your cell phone out if you have one. Call us, we'll come down and handle it. Okay? At any time, use profane, obscene, or vulgar language in any manner. And I would, none of you do, would ever use vulgar language, would you? At your age? <laughs> no. So, remember that. Even under your scroll, breath. Scroll up a little bit, David. Even when you're facing the other way. In the day of a, everybody has cell phones. Everybody's videotaping all the time. Somebody somehow is going to yeah. get wind of it, hear you, or something. <coughs> Do not display any impatience or be perceived as aggressive, confrontational, hot-headed, or short-tempered. And do not create unnecessary friction or be responsible for having escalated the situation. Don't add a coach on. Yeah. Don't follow them to the dugout if they're leaving the field and don't follow behind them and, and keep at them. All right. What we do want you to do, be calm, professional, tactful, firm, in control, fair, and impartial. Typically, it's pretty easy to do. You're getting paid to be there. So in all reality, it shouldn't matter to you who wins or loses. You got one thing in mind, and that's to make the game run as smooth as possible for you and everybody involved. Yep. Know and follow all the rules and regulations of the OCAC League program. You need to understand your role as a steady, calming influence on the game. Keep everything composed, under control. That's what you're there for. Listen to the coaches if their discussions are reasonable and non-emotional. Okay? Coach comes up screaming to you, the yeah. best thing you can do is stay calm. Okay? Yeah. So if you have a coach up here hollering, screaming, and yelling, you stay down here and talk at this level, they'll slowly come yeah. down. It forces them to come down. Okay. They come in screaming at you, and you start hollering back, and now everything escalates up to here. Okay. And a coach will try to get you to raise your voice at him or try to get you to engage him however means possible. So, I mean, most of you guys play ball. You, you've seen it happen. So, Biggest thing you'll run into in a lot of your age groups is they're going to try and uh, change your call, make you second guess what you just called. Okay. At that point in time, calm the coach. Mm -hmm. Go to your partner. If you think maybe you did make a mistake, you two talk independently. Make a determination from yep. there. Okay. But they'll come running out, try to get on you, make you feel like you didn't know what you were doing. So that's the whole idea is calm, volatile situations while keeping control and managing them. You stay here, they have to come down. Yeah. Almost always. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> Any violations of this code could require the umpire to appear before the board of directors, and any violation could result in expulsion from the program if deemed necessary. Yeah. So, you do something completely out of control. Yeah. Push a coach. Push a coach. coach. Any questions yeah. on that? Or uniforms? Uniforms, anything? Nope. Oh. Okay. All right.
this is part of that other page. We don't need this. Oh, okay. Right there, just yeah. from the out. Yeah. From the out, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I missed that. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a ball bag uh, indicator. Yeah. That, the a, kit is the everything. And a brush, is it? Yeah. That The kit is everything. Oh, okay, no, that's, yeah, that's the all-star umpire kit. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that would be all like your... That's going to be all of your plate gear, your bag, your indicator, your brush. It, it won't be your shirt or pants or anything, but that'll be the kit. So if you're planning on doing player pitch, I'd recommend just getting the kit, so the, the low-end kit to start with, okay? Then once you start making good money, see, you can get all the fancy, get the Cadillac gear, you know. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Any other questions on here? Okay. All right, everybody know, Everybody sees umpires call outs, right? How many different ways have you seen it? Same way all the time, or you see it differently all the time? Huh? Yeah, so we're going to show you the way that typically this is how all the outs are called. They're, they're, you, you bring your hand straight up and it's out. So you'll see some umpires will just go out or they'll just say out, but we want to make sure that you're actually signaling. So when you make the call, it's out and make sure you say it loud enough for everybody to hear. Um, last thing you want to do is make a call and not be loud. Now you got the coaches out there. Well, what did you say? You know, what was the call? Because maybe you didn't signal good enough or you weren't loud enough. So, if you uh, get into the habit of this right here, yeah, this when you do it, it's going to keep you from getting into habits of out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you know, as you stand there, most of your calls are you're going to be coming up from here. So let's say you're here watching first base mm -hmm. or second base, and you're going to come up, out, get into the habit. Do that, and then it'll force you to raise your hand. Don't do this. That's so everybody sees you and everybody mm -hmm. knows clearly what you called. So, you want to have them do it? Yeah. Yeah, we can. And you know, make sure you call it loud too you've got to sell it especially if it's a close play if you're kind of unsure about it and you're kind of weakly say out and you know you're not selling the call you've got to sell that out especially on close calls yeah you guys want to stand up and try it no come on everybody stand up good way to wake up yep all right what's first you lead the way do? first thing you're going to do Out. Yeah. You gotta hear the out. Yeah. Out. Out. Oh. Oh. See? That's the correct way. Right? Yep. All right. While you're standing, we'll show you the overhand. It'll be a little bit harder for you guys to do. Yeah, I'll let you do that one. Most of these, most of this is going to be like at a close play. Kind of says up there a little bit. Got a bang bang play first or second. You want to sell it more. Yeah. That's when you're going to do a punch, right? So see, he's coming from the knees. Comes up, right? That's how I do it. Yeah. That one there, they come back. I come back. Fall yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> so I try to lean yeah. backwards. Yeah. So that would be for a bang bang. What you're trying to do is convince the crowd that you knew exactly what you saw, even though you might be doubting what you saw. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you sell to them. That's a definite yeah. out. Okay? Yeah. So that's the only time you're really going to use that. And if you're on machine pitch and coach pitch, yeah, you, very rarely there's bang bang. Yeah. But some of you are doing both, right? Doing machine and player mm -hmm. pitch. Yeah. So. And if you do do a punch out, foul it back by coming back to your knees. You're basically saying, I saw it, made my decision, and now we're now I'm standing yeah. by it again. Yeah. Okay. So. 
I'd have you guys try it, but I'm afraid you'd punch each other in the back of the head. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, but that'd be yeah. cool. You can see yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's just another thing. yeah another version except you're not going through all the motions F for some reason the safe call is always hard for people to to get when they're on the fields a lot of times you'll be watching a game and you'll see an umpire out there and they'll go safe what was the call if you don't well yell it loud enough you just kind of do this or what's the other one you like the the safe, yeah. Like you're flapping like a duck or a yeah. bird out there. Yeah, so, I mean. So you never want to become running up, too. So you always want to be in a stationary mm -hmm. position when you make your call. If you got a runner running the second and yep. you're running after that runner, don't make the call till you stop. Don't be running. Yeah. Right? So you want to tell me? Yeah, so basically, just like it shows here, when you, when you make the call, you come up, you make the call, and you bring your hands up and out. So you come up, you get into position, you watch the call, you come up, safe! And that way it's clear to everybody what you called. And like Rod was saying, run, chasing the player across the field, I, I did that once and stubbed my toe, and when I came out, I put my arms out, and the coach thought I called him safe when he was really out. So that's why you... Stress. Always be stationary when yeah. you call. So. If you fall down, then don't make the call until you stand back yeah. up. <clears throat> well. Okay? We'll be laying on the ground. Yeah. When you sell a safe, when you scroll that up, when you sell it, you're just leaning in. That's all you're going to do. You're going to lean forward. So if you got that bang, bang play, and we did the punch out look on the screen the same signal you're going to signal exactly the mm -hmm. same way you're just leaning into take a step in and you're and like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> right yeah dead ball foul ball no pitch that is not a touchdown no <laughs> so yeah not hands like this yeah. Not like this. Yeah. Straight up. Every time. And again, that's another one that we always see, though. Just throw your hands up. But you got to get them up in the air so everybody knows. Just bringing them up here is not a, not a call. Time is called the same way as a dead ball, foul ball. Except obviously you yell time and not dead ball. Fair ball. What's the one thing you never do on a fair ball? Anybody know? But something you never ever see an umpire say on a fair ball. Right. Mm -hmm. And never say fair ball. You know why? Because in a hurry, what's it sound like? <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Never say fair ball. Be a point. Okay? Only if you're on the outside of the lines. Yeah. Okay? So if you're out behind the second baseman out in the field, you're not going to signal that. Okay? It's only if you happen to be on the outside of the lines. When we get in the field position, then you'll know. But you're not going to signal that on the inside of the field. Then people are going to mistake it for a dead ball or anything else. Delayed play. Think. or Yeah. So as long as there's no signal, and you'll signal a foul from inside the field, especially on the machine pitch and coach mm -hmm. pitch, yeah. because there is no plate umpire to call it, right? Only on the outside of the lines. All right? So never say fair ball. This is what they're talking about there. 
let's say you're standing there and you're at the first base side, you haven't had to go out in the field and they hit the ball, it stays in the line before you move, you're just going to signal in and go on in, right? If it stays fair, yeah, fair If foul. it stays fair, yeah. right. So if the ball's hit fair, rolls out in fair territory and you're standing there, do you call it, as soon as it crosses that line, do you call it fair right away? Or foul right away? No? you got to wait for a player to touch it to, or the ball to come to a rest, right? Okay. I was watching my grandson play last year. First first time this happened, the umpire got it wrong. Second time it happened, they got it right. Because by the time the fans got done with them, and this was a 7U machine yeah. pitch, okay? Something that you guys will be doing. Ball comes up the right field line. Right, head right over the line, right over the line, slowing down, slowing down, almost to the line. Umpire holler, foul <laughs> ball. Right, hits a rock, rolls back that way, goes into fair territory. Happens. <clears throat> it does mm -hmm. happen. So. Never be in a hurry to make your <clears throat> call. Now, if that happened and the coach comes running out, what can you do about it? Can you fix it? No. Play's already come to a stop at that point. We've already stopped play. Especially since he crossed the line to come out to yell I at I know him. you should know because you've yeah. already done right in the mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Can't do anything about it. That happened twice in one game. <laughs> Got it right the second time. <laughs> Most of you aren't going to have delayed dead balls. No problem will be what, till 10 you, 11 we'll, you? We'll go through it on the, any of you staying around on the, yeah. for the player pitch side. Same way with an infield fly. You're not going to have any on the machine pitch or coach pitch. No nine you either, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Point. Now, it isn't a bad habit to get into pointing. When you see a situation, let's say it's close, a lot of times what you want to do is point, basically what you're saying, I see it, and then make your call, either out or safe. All right? Sometimes you can't see the ball, right? Same thing. A bunch of dirt, dust there, the yeah. little Johnny's got his little glove, you can't see the ball or nothing, you're pointing, show me the ball. Show me the ball, show mm -hmm. me the ball, then you can make your call. So pointing is to show that you've got your eye on it when you yeah. do it, yeah. basically. It's a selling point yeah. to the, uh, what we call the outside world. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, setting in position and delaying your call to make sure that everything calms down before you, because you don't want to do a bang, bang call. As soon as you see it, you want to give, give time to react. So. We'll talk about that a little bit more too, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Home run. Everybody's seen mm -hmm. that. Everybody here watch regular baseball? Yeah. You'll probably start viewing the game a little bit differently once you start umpiring. What we found that people, when they start umpiring, they tend to start watching the umpires, how they make calls, what they do instead of the game. So be it just note, make a note to yourself next time you watch a ball game. See if you're watching the players more than you're watching the umpires this time. So. Don't have to worry about doubles. No. Hopefully you'll never yeah, worry about that. We're never going to have to worry about an ejection, right? <laughs> have you seen a coach, any of your coaches been ejected? Yeah? <laughs> wow. In our league or somewhere else or tournaments? Yeah. yeah? <laughs> Do we need to explain how it's done? Or have you guys seen it enough to know how it's Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. So let's say he's a coach, right? Step back. Coach. Mm -hmm. Out of here. Later. Mm -hmm. Hit the highway. Unless his dugout's that way. So yeah. Yeah. Point out. Yeah. Let's make that a last resort. What would your coach get ejected for? 
Arguing balls and strikes. That is definitely a rule breaker. <laughs> what well, was yours? So the umpire didn't maintain his calm coolness when the coach came up. Yeah. <laughs> so. Arguing balls and strike. Yeah. Those of you doing both, you're going to see that a lot. You're going to be amazed to find out how somebody who's all the way inside the dugout on the opposite side of the field can see where that ball crossed on the right corner of the plate. Idea how they can see yeah. that they got magical yeah. eyes but while looking through a fence, right? So, yeah. Any questions? So, that is kind of a fun one to practice with, though, when you're at home. Practice tossing people, it's kind of cool. <laughs> right, what else we got on there? Pull it back down, will you, a little bit? No. The other way. Okay, yeah, that's just a front view. You can scroll down. <clears throat> Any event, there might be a question on whether or not a run scores. When you're doing older <laughs> player pitch, you'll have situations <coughs> where people are confused whether that run counts or not, depending on the out. <coughs> Your younger groups, it's mainly whether or not, whether or not that runner <clears throat> touched home plate. Yeah. So if you think there's any doubt, and you know they did, but the fans are doubting it, just point down. That's telling everybody it counts. Yeah. And that you saw it. Yeah. If it didn't count, now you're at home plate, basically just crossing away like this. Anybody ever had that in a game you play in? Yeah. Not going to need a whole lot for this on machine pitch and coach pitch. No. Basically, you're not behind a plate. This is more of a plate work call. So, you won't go into that until the next one. Same way with the do not pitch. We have the strike call. Looks similar to the out, doesn't it? But it's not. <clears throat> foul tip. Now yeah, you, you can, won't see that. You can have a foul can tip. You? Yeah. But technically it doesn't matter yeah. because it gets steal anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, on machine pitch and coach pitch. Counts, you're not going to have counts. You just got to make sure you use your indicator. Help you to keep track of how many times they pitch because coaches will lose track whether they are pitching or yeah. running the machine. So whoever's yeah. going to be in a primary position is going to need to keep an idea on how many they've thrown because otherwise they, they'll end up throwing eight pitches or something. Especially coach pitch after they get three. Coach, that's three. And then that should be an indicator to him because then he can bring in a batting tee for the other last two if they choose. It's not mandatory. And you don't have to tell him that. You just When he gets to uh, three pitches, coach that's three, so he knows he's got two more left and he can make a decision on to bring in a batting tee or not. <coughs> don't need the infield fly. Nope. There you go. How many outs? Sometimes you might get lost, you know what I mean? So you can signal to each other. You can also ask verbally, okay? Hey, Blue, how many outs you got? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. But that's going to be you're asking right here, okay? Yeah, it's kind of hard to verbally when, when you're behind the plate and your partner's in the field, so. You communicate you're all that in way. a machine pitch, you're going to be in a closer vicinity yeah. to each other so you can holler at each other, but you could. It's not bad habit to practice. But you could be standing there. The other one, I have any idea what your partner yeah. had. I have <laughs> any idea you're trying to signal because yeah. you're doing one of these numbers and 
They're not even paying any what, attention. What's he doing out there? Why is he doing that? Right, yeah. So. And that would be the response. And you always signal down. Correct way is really this way. If you've been around too long and you did it the old way, yeah. it would be like that for two hours. But this is technically the correct way. So if your partner asks you how many outs, you either do this, do this, yep. okay, or you come back like this for no outs. Don't have to worry about a count. Go through those on the player pitch. Third strike, nope. Don't have to worry about that. Third strike is not caught. No timing plays. There's a lot of signals you just won't use on this machine pitch and coach pitch. That's why we'll go over some rules, yeah. right? Yeah. <clears throat> that's it, right? Yep. So any questions on those? Pretty simple, cut and dry. Not going to have any issues out there. So. Is that how they signaled out where you were at to each other? Yeah. Some some umpires come up with their own signals. Yeah, I think the the, the come up to the fist that came mainly came from softball side, didn't it? Uh, so, from behind the plate. From behind the plate, yeah. 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 Instead of just holding. Basically, your... they got away from the point, and you'll still see pros do it. They got away from calling balls and strikes like this and this because it takes your eye off of a potential play that's happening in the field. So that's why they went to the up. On the strike. I think it looks cooler the other way myself, yeah. but yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, you guys got any questions and signals? I know they say to practice, stand in front of a mirror, helps you tone that how you're calling. Loud, loud, loud. Yeah. Louder the better. Maybe work on getting your voice deep. Hey. Unless you already got one. Yeah. You won't do I was real. a I was a gravel caller, yeah. so <laughs> I put out a gravel sound when I was. <laughs> All right, go over some go rules. some rules. Uh, you get that over there for me. That should be on on the desktop. Do uh, five six. Five six U. Yeah, we'll go a little more in depth on. You guys that. still have your sheets that we gave you on those at home? I know. I'm sure they're not here, <clears throat> but you have them, right? Everybody no, has one at home. I don't have the uh, field to pull up to do anything like that. No, we won't, we'll, we'll do that on the yeah. positioning. Okay. We'll, we'll cover the rules again because it's probably one of the most important parts about what you're doing out there that you really understand. You will have coaches that will try to convince you that these rules aren't the rules that they're playing by that him and the other coach have made an agreement that they're going to play by this other set of rules because they agreed to it that it's okay. It's not okay. They need to play by these rules on this sheet. <coughs> um, we'll just start at the top here again. Remember, it's, it's one hour or five innings, whichever occurs first. It is a drop dead. So remember that when that timer goes off, the game is, is technically done at that point, but you allow the batter in the box to finish their um, at-bat. If the coach asks about scoring of the game, so if you're in the middle of an inning, so say you're, you've played three innings, so you're at the middle of the fourth inning, the, the top of the fourth, the, the visiting team's batting, timer goes off, score is going to revert back to the previous inning if they ask. Because they're not going to, so if they scored four runs in that top of that half, it's not fair because the other team didn't get the finish. Not that we keep score, or not that the, they get first or second. Everybody gets a trophy at that age, but it is important to the kids, they say, that to, for the scores. So. Yep. <sighs> Fifteen player. This is mainly for the coaches, not for you all. It's not your concern. Yeah. So if a team shows up and they got 16 kids there, yeah, it's really not your concern, no. okay? So, yeah. Remember five in, 
five runs or three outs, outs whichever occur first. Um, that's why it's it's good to keep on your your indicator how many runs. And if they got four runs, bases loaded, and they hit a home run, and the other four runs score, you can't score more than five. You'll have coaches will ask, well, do those last three or four runs count? No, they don't. You only get five max per per inning or three outs. No. This that, is the one where anybody messes up. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially if you're doing both. Eight you and right. our player pitch, yeah. In a regular ball game, they can start. They have to have eight. Peewees, we let them start with six. So if you're jumping back and forth, don't get that messed up. Okay, if you're doing both. If they show up with five, and they say, "Well, the coach is going to let me borrow two kids so we can play," technically, you don't have to stay for that game because they they only had five players. They're more than welcome to stay and use the field for an hour, but you don't have to stay and ump that game because it's technically not a legal game. Yeah, we actually don't want you to stay yeah. on. Yeah. So if they don't have enough to play, just make sure you get the coaches <clears throat> to sign the card. You come back to the shed. Yeah. But we don't really want you to stay there because it's now not a regulated OCAC game which doesn't fall underneath the OCAC umbrella. So if something happens, yeah. essentially, you know, yeah. Liability reasons. Liability issues. Yeah. So. You can leave the bucket of balls out there for them to use for an hour, but tell them you're going to be back in 45 minutes for the next game, so they have to be done with whatever they're doing by then. <sighs> Teams will bat rosters. You guys, you guys know how we how we run. Are you guys familiar with how we bat rosters? So, if you got twelve kids, all of you guys on the roster bat in order. There's no nine substitutions. Um, so they're gonna get five. And we kind of covered this the other day before we did ground rules. Maximum of five pitches. So if we're doing five six u. Right here, within the first three pitches, if the batter does not put the ball fair, then the coach has the option using batting tee or pitch the two additional chances. After the two additional swings, the batter is declared out if the ball is not put in play. So that's why I said when they get to a count of three, just say, Coach, that's three. And when we talk to the coaches, we're gonna, we'll are gonna we let them know that you'll indicate that that's three and it's their choice to bring in a batting tee at that point or not. Um, some will, some won't. So. Some will try to convince you, well, it's mandatory. You've got to make that coach bring batting tee out. It's not mandatory. It is, it is completely optional. So. Some will try to say that, well, we get five pitches, so we get two more off a of tee. We've heard that, too. It's five max. They're, they're, they're going to try to convince you to, to do what they can to, to get an extra advantage out there. So. <sighs> You can do this one. Dead ball. <clears throat> when are we going to have a dead ball? When, when can that happen? Give us some examples here. Let's just go coach pitch or machine pitch. I don't know if we covered that too deep, ball did we? Hits ball hits the plate. No. Except you said player. Right. Mm -hmm. But this is a problem you're going to have in those age groups. Yeah. Everybody understands a dead ball. Do you understand? If you, if you all play, do you understand a dead ball rule? All right. So what's one of the guidelines for it to be not to be a live ball and become a dead ball when it hits a rudder? It can't pass potential fielder right so if you're if you got a fielder here you, regular ball you got a fielder here and the ball comes by here and hits that runner is that a dead ball no past the potential fielder the problem you got on six u and seven u kids is have you if you even every if you've never even seen them play 
none of them are in typical normal baseball or softball positions. They're always on the inside of the line. They're almost always on the inside of the lines. So what are the odds of it not passing a fielder before it hits the runner? Oh, yeah. Right. You get some of your really good 7U machine pitch teams, you may yeah. see them in position, and that would be a different scenario. But we even explain to the coaches that we don't push the dead ball no. on hitting a player very often because most of the time they're out of position. Yeah. So Interference also. Right. Runner, fielder interference. We don't, we don't push that either on the interference calls. What else could be a dead ball? If it hits you, is it a dead ball? No. If it hits the coach pitching, is it a dead ball? It's a machine. Machine pitch, a dead ball. Yeah. That'll be about it. Yeah. Other than Right here, and we'll, and we'll explain this a little bit more when we pull the field up and go into positions when you call it dead when it crosses the, the baseline and hits the field. Um, yeah, I don't know of any other. Okay. Dead ball, there shouldn't yeah. be. Yeah. Not at that age. Nope. <clears throat> Again, players are not allowed to steal or lead off. Um, so it's not leaving the base after the ball crosses the plate or anything like that. They just can't leave until the ball's hit. No infield fly rule. We just went over if it touches a coach, umpire, yep. or a parent, when it is hit, it'll be live. Yep. Defensive positions. It's free substitution on defense. Uh, Batting order must remain the same. So basically, it's you got 12 kids on the lineup. They bat the the order. You get 10 kids out in the field. You can switch them out. They can do whatever they want, and that and that's mainly for the coaches. Um, number two would be for you guys to kind of know 10 players on the field at a time. They're allowed one pitcher, one catcher, four infielders, and all other must play outfield positions. Sometimes you'll have a team where the catcher just doesn't want to catch or they don't have anybody that wants to put the catching gear on, so they're going to say, well, we don't have a catcher. We're going to go ahead and throw, since we have 10 players, we're going to go ahead and throw them in the outfield so we've got five outfielders or another infielder. You can't do that. So that's why we clarified pitcher-catcher position, four infielders, um, and four outfield, and all others play outfield. So, so basically, if they don't have a catcher, they got to – Go out in the outfield. Yeah. yeah, they can't. They can't run with three in the outfield and seven on the infield. Yeah. Okay, and they try to pull it all the time because it makes it easier for yeah. them. Essentially, they'll create a a wall, a second <laughs> a second pitcher position yeah. or something. Yeah. Right. So don't let them do that. Yeah. Pitcher must be positioned to the first base side of the coach. We do that for a reason. Um, we want them to start getting used to being to the first base side of the coach because when they get up to machine pitch, the wheel is on the other side of the machine. So we try to keep the catchers in case they're running in so they don't get tangled up in the wheel on the machine. So we always want them on the first base side. Um, again, you'll have some coaches that'll try to argue that, but that is the rule. All right, coaching. They get four when they're on offense, okay? Two when they're on defense. So they can have one at first, one at third. Naturally, the one that's going to be mm -hmm. pitching. And then one behind the plate to help their batters stay in position where they're supposed to be. So you're going to find out real quick, kids have a tendency to either be too far forward, too far back. Yep. Most of the catchers don't even know where to line up at. So it doesn't even hurt for you to encourage them to put somebody back there. Okay? Yeah. And also, check balls. also, while we're at it, make sure you – first few times you have those teams, make sure you tell them use all five balls. Yeah. 
before throwing them back. Okay, they can just roll back behind the fence. If the catcher gets it, do all five and then throw them back. If you sit there and wait for each ball to come throw them back, hmm. it takes too much uh, time up. They okay. only got an hour. Hmm. We'll teach the coaches that too when we have our manager meetings, but it's nice for both sides to have that under control. Yeah. You'll take the game balls to the field. Again, that was we talked about. There will be a bucket in the shed that has the game balls you need. There will be five balls in there. So you just grab that, go down to the field. And OCAC rulebook will govern any rules not covered here. You shouldn't need to go to their our OCAC rule book to this one. There really shouldn't be any reason for this at that age unless you have an ejection or illegal roster or something that you shouldn't really have to deal with at that age. So otherwise, these are pretty much the rules you're going to play unless you think of something in there that might affect them. <coughs> outdoor we'll show them how to run the generator yeah or I could bring bring one up here and we can do that in machine generator like we did before we we'll need to show you how to run the generator how the machine actually operates <clears throat> so if it runs into an issue yeah. we have a lot of coaches that don't even know how to operate them yeah most of the time yeah a lot of times we get calls the generators not running or it just died um, typical reasons is the fuel valve is shut off or there's a vent cap on top of the gas cap. A lot of times the coaches got the first thing they do is they'll try to open it up, but they're really closing it. So the generator will start for about three minutes, then it can't get any air into the, the fuel. So it essentially starves itself, it shuts down, nobody can get started again. So we'll show you those few things to check before you, you make a call to have somebody bring a new generator down there. That's probably 99% of the problem when I go down and the generator won't run is somebody's turned the fuel off or they didn't turn the on button on, or they closed the fuel cap, the vent cap. Okay. Any questions on any of that? Where do you always want to attempt to make your calls mm -hmm. starting from? Whether it's an out, safe, or whatever, where do you want to really start from? A Ready set position. position. Which is your set position. Okay, kind of hard in here. Well, yeah, on the field it'd be nice because we yeah. can actually show you more. We'll do some work on a field chart and everything. You have a general idea where you're standing, but until you get out on the field, it's a lot easier to do it there. But you always want to be set when possible. There are going to be times some of the little kids can move, so if you get caught sleeping, you'll be chasing behind them. We're checking to see if the treasurer has anything for you. On paperwork and everything. So we all comfortable then? We're ready to go, huh? Get our gear on and start up. What we got? So. So this is the, the paperwork that the treasurer will need by the end of March um, so you guys can get paid. Basically, well, we'll wait until it all gets checked out the throat so then we all talk about the same. Sorry. <laughs> Better? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yeah, you can just lay those on a chair back there. Okay, so basically this is the paperwork that the treasurer is going to need back from you guys by the end of March. That way she can get you into the system and make sure that she has everything set up so you can start getting paid. Um, the first sheet just kind of goes over when your first pay will be. Um, now that's if you start working the 8th. So uh, we start on the 8th. So the first check you get when you start then will be for, the, for, for only one week, and then it's every two weeks after that. Um, 
The other one, the W9, if you look at that, you can see that we've highlighted where everybody, what you need to fill out. So you need to make sure that's all filled out. That way we got uh, tax information. Um, and it just uh, helps keep us out of trouble with the government. So we got to make sure we keep that paperwork on file. The next one is going to be your direct deposit. Um, we don't do checks. We do direct deposit. So you're probably going to have to have a savings account of some sort. Uh, from what I understand, I think you have to be, I think it's 18 to have a checking account now, isn't it? So I think at, at your guys' age, you'll probably have to open up a joint savings with, your, with one of your parents. Um, but make sure you fill this out legibly. Attach a voided check or deposit slip. Um, and make sure all your numbers and everything that we can read. Because this will be how you get paid. If we don't have that information, we can't get your money into your account for you. So um, if you have any questions on that, just email the office or call the office and, and we'll get you answers as quick as we can. We have had cases where <coughs> parents just put their bank account on there. Yeah, we can't do that anymore, though. Right. And yeah. yeah, it creates issues. Yeah. So It has to be in your name. We, we've had uh, deposits rejected before because it would come in in your name and it's going to a different name, which is your parent's name, and the bank says, no, we can't do that. You know, that's, you got to, so it does have to have your name on the account that it's Most going to. Most of your banks today, you create a student account. Yeah. So. Student savings, so shouldn't be an issue. Okay. Gives you plenty of time to get that all ready. Yeah. You guys got any questions on any of this? I mean, go over and look it over if, if. Come back next week. If you got questions, just ask us. You know, that's why we're here. So, do you have a test you want to hand out to them or talk about last week's test? No, nope, no test this week. I okay. had, had an issue getting the images to no. come off so I could adjust them. Well, use that. Hmm? Okay. Uh, you can get them better from that other thing I got. So, who all brought their quizzes? Every, most everybody? Mm -hmm. Awesome. You want to go over them or? I can go over it, but I, I'm going to need it back. And then I'm also going to need your umpire forms if you brought those, because otherwise we're going to have no way to track you. So if you didn't bring it today, make sure you bring it next week, because no way to get you in the system. <clears throat> so what we have, number one was, what is the first thing you do when you meet managers for ground rules? What did everybody say? Correct. What items are to be turned in with game card after game? What was it? Lineup sheets. Lineup sheet. Yeah. Don't forget to bring the game balls back too. Yeah. <clears throat> what is the last thing you do before starting the game clock? Okay. Yellow on the clock. On the clock. When did the manager sign a game card? Before the I game. know these were tough. <laughs> I'm sure you all stayed up late. They crammed last night. over this five-question quiz. Yeah, they, they, they all crammed last night for it, right? And number, now, if any of you missed number five, we've got to sit down and have a long conversation. <laughs> so what was the answer, number five? 1960. All right. Good thing. That's been on that board the whole entire time we've been talking to you for the past few weeks. So, <laughs> any, any questions about all the pregame and everything that we did over last week, too, or anything? They all no. said while well, you're back there, so they're ready to go. All right, we cool. Turn them loose. Turn them loose. They're ready to umpire. All right. We'll find you some good teams work with you outdoors. That'll be fun. Yeah. That's probably my favorite time right there. <clears throat> Outdoor training? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We'll run you through the ropes, get you ready. So, no other questions? All right. All right. We'll turn it off then when we get their forms. So, I'll get your forms from you and your tests. Okay. And then uh, those that brought them and then those that didn't, try and get